You are watching KITV 4 News this morning. Welcome back. It is 521. Well, we've all heard the saying, you are what you eat. And this morning we're learning how food can impact insomnia, weight loss, and so much more. So we've got a list of the worst foods and for your body and a list of the healthiest foods. And this morning, Reader's Digest executive editor Courtney Smith joins us live from New York to talk about the new book, Foods That Harm, Foods That Heal. And it's uh, beautiful, actually. <laughs> Aloha, Courtney. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thanks for having me on. I think this is such an important topic. It certainly is. Um, I guess we're looking at the book right now, and it's a actually very, very nice, very nice put together book. It's kind of like an encyclopedia, I think, for for food, right? It is. We wanted to make it easy for people to look up the foods that they're already eating, and either thinking of adding to their diet. And th there's also 100 conditions so that people can look up any health concerns they have, either something they're suffering from, um, something they're worried about for a family member. And it gives you an at-a-glance list of the foods that harm and heal that condition. You know, because we all know that healthy food is good for us, but this book really gets into the nitty-gritty of here's exactly what to eat for what ails you. So what's an example, Courtney, of the foods that harm? So let's start off with the bad stuff first. Well, we all know that sugar and soda, that that's not good for our health. But what might surprise people is to find out that cured meats is really not that healthy for us. It's been linked to uh, cancer, cardiovascular disease, migraines. So we're better off avoiding or minimizing that in our diet. And energy drinks are another surprising culprit. They're very popular, but they're loaded with sugar. And the FDA has gotten reports linking some to heart attacks. So a healthier way to, you know, caffeinate and wake up our tea and coffee. Hmm. Well, we like that suggestion, yeah. <laughs> Courtney, coffee in the morning. Well, what about organic foods? I know, who doesn't love that, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, especially at this hour. But let's talk about organic foods. Are they, are they worth it then? Organic foods? Yes. Oh, you, the book does say that organic foods are worth your money, but with the caveat, as long as your budget can afford it. Um, and the issue with organic foods is that, unfortunately, the health benefits are not quite proven yet. Um, what we do know about organic foods is they lower your exposure to pesticides. Organic foods have about one-third the pesticide exposure um, of conventionally grown produce. So one way that you can, you know, get a big bang for your buck is to buy the dirty dozen. These are the foods that have the highest level of pesticides, um, you know, and, and they're worth, you know, splurging on your budget. So it's things like strawberries, apples, spinach. A good general rule of thumb is if a fruit or vegetable has a peel that you take off to eat the food, you probably don't need the organic version. It's the ones where you're eating the skin that you really want to splurge. Well, that's good advice because not everyone can afford organic. And we all know that we're supposed to eat fruits and vegetables. Well, but what are the specific foods that could really help your diet? We found some amazing new superfoods in the book. Um, one are, is figs, um, which are right here on the table. And you don't have to peel figs to eat them. You know, I think people find them a little intimidating, but you can just slice them right into salad or eat figs with cheese. And they are loaded with calcium. You know, most fruits don't have this nutrient, and calcium is key for building bone. Um, and some, some of uh, our other favorite new superfoods at Reader's Digest are sesame seeds, which have been found to lower the bad LDL cholesterol. And it's so easy to sprinkle them, you know, into yogurt and on roasted vegetables and into salad. And also beets, which you can grate into salads or other foods. Beets have been shown to sharpen your mind because they have nitric acid and that boosts blood flow to your brain. All right. Very Jill doesn't like beets. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to try to get her to eat some. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a real big beet fan, but hey, I'll, I'll give it a shot if it's really well, you good know, for you. Well, you know what? Try, try lightly roasting them because roasting them can bring out the natural sugars and make them a little sweeter. And roasted beets with goat cheese mm. over uh, spinach or arugula can be quite tasty. That I sounds found, delicious, I found that Courtney. To be the case. Well, I'm a beat fan. We're trying to get Jill on this side. Courtney Smith, live from New York. Thank you so much for joining us. Some really great advice. Thank you. And you can get more information at readersdigest.com.
All right. Thanks, Courtney. And to see this interview again, you can just head to the top video section of our website, KITV.com. It's now 526. We'll be right back.